Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator. And in this video, we're going to talk about something that's been making headlines, which is that California is now an agricultural wasteland of rice farms. And um, that, that was covered a couple places. That was in banned, banned um, news network. But this right here is Strange Sounds. And it says the vice capital of California is now just a wasteland. Look at these uh, terrifying satellite images. Well, that that's the ground right there. Uh, these two articles have a lot of the same things. The Infowars article has one little extra tidbit at the end. I'll give it to you in a bit. But, you know, it's um, it says normally by September, the drive north from San Francisco on Interstate 5 showcases vast stretches of flooded rice fields on both sides, farms bustling with tractors and workers preparing the fall harvest. Um, not this year, said Kurt Richer, a third generation rice farmer. It's now just a wasteland. And here is where that rice producing area is in California, north of uh, Sacramento and uh, this is a USDA. It, it says that um, the United States is a consistent, timely supplier of high-quality rice, both in the long and combined medium and short uh, grain global markets. Uh, the United States accounts for less than 2% of global rice production, but, but it ships around 6% of global exports and is currently the fifth largest exporter. Exports are thus important to the U.S. rice industry with a 45 to 50% of the crops typical exported each year. And this is where the um, exports go to by 1,000 tons here. So Mexico uh, gets the most, Central America, Haiti, Japan, Canada, uh, Korea. Yeah, yeah, believe it or not, we're, you know, we're shipping over to Asia. Uh, Venezuela, Colombia, Saudi Arabia, um, Jordan, Iraq, the Middle East, back to Asia, Taiwan, and back to the Middle East, Libya and Turkey. So we, you know, we produce a lot of rice here. And uh, right now, at least in California, it's just a wasteland. And, and California is um, one of the four regions, the Sacramento Valley of California, but the Gulf Coast. Texas and southwest Louisiana, the Mississippi Delta, which is parts of Arkansas, Mississippi, Missouri, and Louisiana, and the Arkansas Grand Prairie are also um, produce rice. And these are the four regions that make up almost the entire U.S. rice production. But not this year. It says, as drought endures for a third year with record-breaking temperatures and diminishing water supplies, more than half of California's rice fields are estimated to be left barren without harvest. About 300,000 out of the 550,000 or so in reported areas. Um, this year, rice is estimated to account for 2% of total planned planted acres across the state. And, you know, in the Sacramento uh, River Valley, it's, it's among the top producers, an important staple in the United States. Uh, it says raw, rice crops continue to more than contribute more than $5 billion a year in tens of thousands of jobs in California's economy, according to the California Rice Commission. Um, much of the sushi rice consumed in the U.S. is grown here. The dramatic reduction in rice acreage will translate to lost revenue of an estimated $500 million, about 40% of which will be covered by federal crop insurance, according to UC Davis agricultural economist Aaron Smith. But, um, you know, that insurance doesn't last forever, they say further down here. And here is uh, satellite maps, and you can see, uh, you know, Glen over here is pretty green, and Glen over here. Now, now um, the the left side is 2021, the right side is 2022. This is all brown. This this is, it's just all brown here. Even 
the the bottom part here is is not <laughs> as lush as looking right here that that's green you know and and up through here there's there's just a little bit of sparse green here and that is definitely a huge difference in a year and um you know right here they say it's not just uh rice production which you know with all the food production going offline right now and you know farmers slaughtering their cattle because they don't have water to feed them you know i, I mean it's it's a huge problem that again another portion of food production is going down while population is increasing uh but you know it says migratory birds that travel and feed in those fields and um they they're not going to have any place to to go and yeah get fed and you know get hydrated right here it says among the six top rice producing counties in the sacramento river valley four are expected to plant significantly less than last year only butte and yuma count yuba counties remain relatively unscathed by the scorching drought that's that's it has consequences and you know uh, you know it, down here in this video they say well you know of course climate change um but it, and many of course say geoengineering you know droughts happen they they've happened over humans uh habitation of earth but these days we can't be sure exactly what is causing these droughts but but here's a farmer i've been farming since uh, 1980 and I've had a rice crop every year except for this year. Fields that should be green with young rice stalks are down to the dirt. This is how dry it is. Dirt dry, dusty dry. Dirt dry, dusty dry. And then here they, they talk about the migrating birds. But in this small island of lush, an indication of the drought's other casualties. There are shorebirds, there are egrets. That's a mallard someplace. Michael Lyons, director of public policy for Audubon, California, says the rice fields are crucial for the survival of millions of migrating birds. They're so reliant on those rice fields. And now what we're looking at with the drought is significantly reduced amounts of rice planted and even a lower ability to put water out on the landscape. The fallow so, yeah, that's an NBC News um, report there. But it says here that the impacts of the drought have been devastating and far reacher, says Richer. Uh, it's been as ugly as we anticipated it could be. Of the 5,000 or so anchors, acres in his family's farm operation, where he is the vice president, just 1,300 acres have been planted this year. The rest are barren. Um, he says that they um, have been able to keep their full-time staff but won't be hiring any seasonal laborers this year or subcontractors. Well, um, well, there's a silver lining. So we don't need all the illegal invaders who say, oh, well, you know, we're doing jobs Americans won't. Uh, I'll tell you how to get Americans doing those jobs. It's very simple. Eliminate welfare. <laughs> and all the people that spend generations on welfare yapping about, you know, how horrible whites are these days to, and there's plenty of whites on welfare too, but, you know, they're, they're not yapping about how horrible white people are, but the people that spend generations, you know, on welfare that yap about how horrible white people are when we go to work and give them the life of leisure without ever having to do anything. And they, you know, their neighborhoods may need some cleaning up. Well, you have all the time in the world to do it, people. And you don't. But yet you have every basic necessity. Oh, you have a welfare Christmas. Well, go get a job. Here you go. And then, then, you know, we'll, we'll have people that are out, the advocates for immigrants, immigrants, you know, invaders. They need wages. No, what we need is wages for Americans, Eva Longoria. 
She's always out there. You know, we've, we've got to pay these people. I'm like, no, why don't we be America, operate to free market capitalism, pay, <coughs> I'm sorry, pay Americans, of which there is a huge labor, untapped labor pool, and we don't need a single illegal invader. But right now, with our country, you know, beyond overrun from di five decades of this, and it getting worse by the day, this this right here, not being able to hire any seasonal labor, uh, may maybe is a good thing for America. But uh, I digress, as some say. You know, and then they end this off just basically saying, you know, um, the, the crop insurance won't last forever. There are limits as to how much can be claimed. And, uh, you know, they're considering planting non-rice crops to make up for some of the loss and as well as conducting research trials to figure out how to grow light rice with much less water. But then they're really just hoping, uh, you know, for the drought to come to a miraculous end. And this uh, band networks, their, their article, it's not as long. It, it covers most of the same things. But, you know, it says, as a reminder, the state is responsible for a tremendous amount of U.S. food production, cutting off water to farmers, leaving tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of acres unworkable, will only exas exacerbate the food crisis. And yeah, we, we are in a food crisis with more and more mouths to feed. And, you know, right, right here, this network will tell you it's not global warming, even though at the end of this news report, you know, even the farmers talk about that. No one knows for sure. Um, they, this news network here that, you know, they will, of course, tell you it's geoengineering. We don't know. There's always been droughts. And people have overcome them, but I, I mean, just look at that scorched earth right there. And a huge percentage of rice production is offline. And that, that's going to have an impact, especially with everything else that's going offline these days. So just um, get supplies, people. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not a prepper channel, but... I, I mean, you should always have some supplies, and you definitely may need them, so stay tuned.